Hey everyone, so I've been uh, a bit ill the last few days but I've just been messing around with this here. Now some of you older viewers might have remembered me building this as one of my uh, first videos. It's been sitting under my workbench ever since and we had a big storm the other day and I attached the uh, vertical access turbine wings that I made for it years and years ago and it was rubbish. It made about 20 watts in about 16 mile an hour wind. Useless. Don't know what was wrong with it, but essentially I flipped it on its side, turned it into a horizontal axis wind turbine. I've made a furling tail for it so this tail can move to furl it out of high winds. It's all out of scrap. Um, it's just knocked together crappy welds and everything, but yeah, it's just the experiment really. So I've made that out of bits I've got lying around and we've just kept this part because this part works fine, this part works brilliantly. Um, uh, and yeah, we're going to make some blades for it and get it installed and see if we can make some uh, wind power. And this will be a 100% handmade wind turbine, mostly from scrap parts. Other than the magnets and the resin, the rest of it's scrap. So yeah, let's uh, go and carve some blades. Right, well I've done quite a bit of research and reading a lot, uh, mostly uh, from a guy called Hugh Piggott. Um, and I've gone with a design that I think is going to work quite well, using a few different, I'm not following anything exactly, I'm putting my own sort of take on it a little bit. But I think we'll, um, we'll be able to make some nice blades. I'm going slightly bigger because, you know, there's a chance that the blades won't be perfect, geometry. And, you know, all that other good stuff, the first time ever doing it and so on. So I'm just making them bigger to account for that. Um, they'll just make more power. So, I've laid out one, tapered one. So I'm gonna do them all three at a time, bit risky, but it's not exactly a major big deal if they don't go perfectly to plan because first set is just to get something up in the air experiment with that one's 28 and there's 41 With the uh, hydro and solar, you know, I haven't really needed much more. But as I start using these bigger tools and things in here and just developing the place, you know, more power isn't, isn't going to hurt. And I am in a very, very good position for wind. And at the very least, it will be a backup for if the, uh, the hydro goes down, you know, for repairs or whatever. So, uh, so it's definitely worth having, it just, it just gives me that bit more power security, you know. Let's uh, get those cut down. Right, so I've got this tapered and marked up so I know what's going on. I've got my tip, that's the leading edge, this is the trailing edge. So now I'm going to mark down from this edge the thickness of this. So I'm going to put a twist in, in this piece of wood. I'm following some measurements here from uh, Hugh Piggott's uh, book. So I'm going to mark them up and then we'll uh, take out some of that wood. Right, start doing some carving.
Okay, so that's another blade roughed out. I've got two done now. So, uh, pretty pleased with it. Let's see if you can look down it. It's got a nice twist and a curve to it. So the wind should tap that and make it turn. That's the theory anyway. And the wing has a pretty nice aerofoil shape to it. It's pretty good, I think. Sort of what's, what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, that's uh, one, two, down. So we make one more, weigh them and everything. And yeah, they actually, they look the same, which is good. Right, just uh, carving the third blade here. So this is the back side of the blade. Seventy, eighty percent of the wood in about ten percent of the time. The rest of it, the, bit, the fine tuning of it, that's what takes ninety percent of the time. Don't be spending ages removing tiny bits of wood at first. You got to get that, get that wood off quick. Next phase is to make our trailing edge really sharp. Now our trailing edge is uh, that edge, that edge there. So we want that to be sharp. Um, it says in the books and everything it should be like less than a millimeter, but I just don't want it to be that sharp. It's just going to erode and degrade. I'd rather than be a little bit less efficient and last longer. So I've made it a couple of mil thick. So. Let's uh, wedge, basically turn this trailing edge into a wedge and round it over. It's already thin here, so we're not going to remove much from there. Now we make the uh, leading edge rounded over, uh, all from the back side. Uh, all nice to start with. A lot sharper of an angle on this one. Doesn't have uh, as much. for you there. So now I'm going to take these top edges, the corners off, start to give this a curve. Down, we've got that twist in the wood. Can you see that? Yeah, so there's the, the twist, so on that end it's almost 
flat with this surface in the end it's at a steep angle so the wind will hit this and make this want to move this way and we've got that curve and that arc in the back can you see it it's really hard to show on camera to be honest maybe if I look down that way yeah but yeah that's all three roughed up and there they are, all three blades roughed out. These two angle cuts on the bottom and so on, finishing, all that kind of stuff, balancing, but yeah, roughed out. Big pile of shavings on the new floor. <laughs> all right, just getting me 30 degree angles cut. So, just get these lined up somewhere near. Quite a nice tight grain this uh, this wood I've used. It's a redwood. Really nice tight grain. So quite happy with that. They should be quite strong. These and quite light still because uh, soft wood. Okay, I'm gonna get this assembled. Won't be able to get into these parts really very easily once uh, once it's glued. So I'm gonna coat everything with a bit of uh, epoxy on here thought about paint and different things but I think probably epoxy is it's going to be the best thing and I've already got epoxy
and there it is. Bit of a beast really. Well, 1.6 meter long blade length. Um, should make some good power. Um, kilowatt or so in a 20-25 mile an hour wind, something like that. My prediction. Yeah, we'll let that uh, epoxy set and then uh, we'll mount it to the, um, the alternator. Hey everyone, so it's the next day. I'm just hammering this onto just made a little back plate and uh, just uh, working it on three 10 mil bolts holding it. Right, I've got my rotor on, I've epoxied it down as well, it's going to be a nightmare to take it off. When I come to take it off, uh, I'm going to have to partially destroy um, this backing plate. That's going to be like a disposable piece if you take it off. But I think that's worth it because, um, because it's, you know, it should only have to come off every few years. And, um, and during that time, I think it being epoxied on all as one piece is going to make it last those few years. I mean I don't have to take it apart all the time. I'm just gonna take a reference point here and see. So that is 242.5 that is 242.5 as well. Is here. Well, that's 230, so that one's lower. Okay, so let's uh, give these two a little bit of a tighten. Okay, it's all mounted to the hub, all the edges of the uh, plywood are all epoxied um, so they can't get water in them. That whole thing is all glued and screwed as one entire mass to take it off. I have to undo these bolts and uh, chip out this plywood, which um, will be an inconvenience, but like I say, it shouldn't be for a number of years. And I think that's better than just having it bolted. I think I won't have to worry about this because this is going to see some serious wind and it's quite big. But it's, uh, it's running well and tracking well. Let's give it a spin. Sounds like there's a little bit of something just in the rotor, but other than that, looking good. We'll let the epoxy dry and we need to get a pole and cable and everything in next. Nice day today, just doing my commute to work. Oh, hello puss, what are you doing in there? Just going through the window. Check it out. Turbine is together, so it's all done. I'm ready to go. Got my furling tail fitted. Um, it rotates as it should, and I get you set up. Yeah, so uh, sitting on a pole that it's going to be on the mast on, so it can rotate into the wind. The furling tail fitted, so that because of the centre of of, uh, of the turbine is offset to the pole the wind is constantly trying to force it that way so the furling tail is there the weight of the furling tail on this angle bracket keeps it facing the wind until a certain point in which case it will pull itself out of the wind and the tail will come round like that so we can adjust at that point by, uh, by adding weight to the tail so the turbine's out of balance as you see if I push that end down it, it wants to go that way on me, so uh, I need to balance it, but I haven't got the, the headroom in here to be able to do that. So I'm going to do that on the mast. It's a nice calm day today, so uh, I'm going to start getting it installed and balanced and everything. But that is going to be the next video. So that's going to be the end of this one. The next one we'll uh, get it all set up. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.